Hello and welcome to VCV Rec 1.0. We have many new features to show off, and there's a lot of cool stuff to see here. So, let's get started. The first interesting thing to show off is the mini map. The mini map allows you to directly control parameters uh, without actually running an actual wire. So, if I play a few notes here and I control reverb. That is being done, you'll notice this little pink dot here, by this CC21 spring reverb dry over here. All you have to do is click, pick a parameter you want to control. I'll go ahead and pick this one and I'll go ahead and pick the VCO octave here. And now you can see this knob is directly controlling this. So now if I go ahead and play all three notes so I can be sure I hit that even VCO. I can directly control that. Alright, moving on, the MIDI module has had a bit of an overhaul, mostly for uh, polyphonic motion here. So we have up to 16 modes of uh, polyphony here. Um, moreover, there's multiple types of uh, polyphony, so currently it's in rotate, so if you look down here at this visualization module, you can see the gate outputs. If I press one note on repeat, you'll see it rotates through them, as the name implies. I could also switch this over to reuse. Now if I press one note, it'll reuse the same one, but the second I press it, effects like that. Moreover, there's one more, which is to me probably the most obvious one, which is just reset. This will simply stack as many notes as you have, it'll use that many uh, channels. So this will always play the first, if I hold two, it'll always play second, if I play three, it'll always use the third. Um, while it's the most simple to understand it's also probably the least musical sounding because you don't get a bit of an arpeggio so if i switch that back to rotate and i just click one key on repeat you can get some more musical effects coming out of it um, finally there's a panic button and um, a few interesting dividers built in for doing the clock stuff Moreover, you'll notice that with the polyphony, there's some more uh, modules added, namely these polyphonic modules like Viz here, Split, and there's also a few more, which if I open up the plugin menu, you'll notice it's been overhauled as well, and I go over to Polyphonic, we have, vi we have Viz, Split, Sum, and Merge. Sum is a, mi a summing mixer that will can take one polyphonic output and sum the full thing, so in this case if I take a gate output, and it, I take the mono out from that, I could actually gate something on any time it's triggered. So I'll actually replace this gate with the mono on that, and you'll notice that every time, regardless of what I do, this is now triggered. The splits here are being used so that I can route individual volt per octaves out, or whatever parameter you would want that's routed into a complex signal, so that you can route it into multiple different options. Finally, merge can be used to create a single polyphonic signal out of multiple wires coming in. So if I take all of the output wires from this, I now have a polyphonic signal that's coming out. So I can actually take that, I can actually take that and I'll use another visualization channel. And I'll use another visualization plugin. And now, see the output directly using that. Obviously this is just an example and not really a practical one at that, but it is an idea for how you can use that. In practice you could also use merge in combination with split to be used kind of a bus system or a snake system to move signals far across your rack. By using another split, merge and split can be used to carry signals long distances. Moving on from this, along with uh, VCV Rack's overall visual overhaul, like you, these uh, power bus rails here, you'll also notice that you can zoom in and out by holding control and moving your scroll wheel. When doing so, you'll note that the center of the area that you can work in is actually physically in the center instead of the top left as it was in previous versions of Rack. Furthermore, the work area has been massively expanded. You now have quite a few rack rows, and I can't imagine anybody actually making a patch that would use that many modules without starting their CPU on fire. Speaking of starting your CPU on fire, 
If you go up to Engine, you can now directly use multiple threads. I currently have it set to 8 threads, which is supposedly supposed to give you the most modules, and you can also turn on real-time priority in Windows to make sure the process has correct affiliations. Moreover, you can change the sample rate to be a higher rate and oversampled so the analog signals sound all the nicer. You can also go into View and View Parameter Tooltips. This makes it so that when you hover over things, it'll tell you exactly what the current um, it'll tell you exactly what it is currently set to. This leads to the idea that you can actually directly modify parameters by pressing right click and typing in a value. This can be used for tuning things, for example. So here I might take this VCO, which is currently set to a 261 hertz signal, and change it to a 440A. Now that will always play an A if I play a C because of the frequency offset. <laughs> In this patch, I'm only using core, fundamental, and BFACO modules. More modules have been developed for VCV Rack 1.0 and are being continually updated so that more are available. For example, here I have the impromptu modular modules loaded. Unfortunately, this was compiled from source, so I only have access to impromptu modular, BFACO, and audible instruments, as that is what I was able to easily build. More modules have already been updated, however, some from VCV Rack 6.3 are probably not going to be ported. Fortunately, on the other hand, some modules are being developed directly for 1.0, so new options will become available as soon as it releases. Speaking of, the release date is likely to be between June 1st and June 14th, 2019. This has been discussed on the VCV Rack forums, however, there is a chance that this will be delayed again, as it has been over already multiple times. Unfortunately, VCV Rack 1.0 is not available as a VST, and instead you'll have to wait till VCV Rack 2.0, which has been said to be dropping sometime either late this year or early next year. To compound this issue further, VCV Bridge is being discontinued, so there's only a limited number of ways you can get VCV Rack to interact directly with the DAW. Fortunately, by using interesting tricks for on Linux using Jack Audio or on Windows using uh, MIDI through virtual MIDI cables like Loop MIDI and audio routing, you should be able to get simple things working. However, full DAW integration is going to be quite difficult now. On the other hand, with VCV Host, you can load VST plugins. However, it is a paid module, and it only supports 64-bit VSTs. If we open up the plugin browser, you'll find that there is now you will find that there is now a CV to MIDI module. This is an input, which you can see because there are white holes instead of the black that are on the MIDI to CV. This is CV to MIDI, and with this you can actually output. Uh, with this you can actually output MIDI to your devices. Here you can see I've mapped my keyboard's in input directly to its output. However, it's the input from the keys to the output of these drum pad buttons up here, which all light up uh, RGB. So now. directly. This can be used for much more advanced things such as triggering MIDI devices on real Eurorack hardware with MIDI to CV modules with either a, or triggering real drums with like a servo or a solenoid. A bunch of things become possible now and hopefully this makes VCV Rack able to be used closer to a DAW as a replacement for these features that we have lost. That's been a quick overview of VCV Rack 1.0. I hope you found this helpful. Again, I am not affiliated with VCV or Rack in any way. However, if you'd like to get in touch and work on a patch or do something interesting, you can contact me at pretty much anywhere as Vega Deftwing. Thank you and have a wonderful day.